Okay, so now we'll continue with our presentations with Dr. Ashadan. She will talk to us about the diffuse lung diseases, continuation from Dr. Bikhal uh, topic, and she talk about the mediastinum. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I will continue the discussion about the diffuse lung disease and a few topics about mediastinum. Uh, another disease, uh, another subject that will cause the diffuse lung disease pattern on the CT scan is the antigen and exposure-related uh, lung disease. Uh, this, the commonly, this exposure-related lung disease affects the uh, upper uh, upper lung uh, lobes because the lower lobes have robust blood supply and lymphatic drainage. Uh, we have two types, uh, the hypersensitivity pneumonitis, uh, and before they called it extrinsic allergic alveolitis, and the pneumoconiosis. Uh, in the hypersensitivity pneumonitis, uh, this is immune-mediated inflammatory response uh, secondary to inhaled organic antigens, like uh, BERT proteins or uh, thermophilic actinomycytes and another types, uh, more types, there, there are uh, uh, organic proteins that cause this uh, hypersensitivity pneumonitis. And in the pneumoconiosis, uh, this is caused by inorganic dust inhalation, uh, we have uh, two types, uh, two most common types, the silicosis and uh, calorcus pneumoconiosis. Uh, the hypersensitivity pneumonitis, uh, this has uh, three phases, uh, the acute, uh, subacute, and uh, chronic, uh, or sometimes they divide it into inflammatory type and fibrotic type. Uh, this is the uh, acute inflammatory type. Uh, this, uh, as we see in this CT scan, uh, this is caused by inflammatory exudate filling the alveoli. The histopathology is the inflammatory exudate filling the alveoli, and uh, this one is uh, seen on the CT scan as centrilobular uh, nodule, ill-defined centrilobular nodule, uh, and some uh, non-specific ground glass uh, or consolidation. Uh, the centrilobular no, no, nodules not rigid the subpleural space, it's sparing the subpleural space. Uh, in this uh, chest X-ray, uh, there is consolidation and uh, may mimic the pulmonary edema, but without the cardiomegaly and pleural effusion. Uh, there is the eosinophilia is not present in hypersensitivity pneumonitis. Do you think any sort of bronchiolitis present in this patient? Uh, yes. Why? Because this is centrilobular uh, nodules. Yes. You should put bronchiolitis. Yeah, the bronchiole is affected. Yes. Okay, first. Second. Early, the, just the alveoli, the alveolitis, the uh, will okay. be affected. This is okay. This specific. Okay. What other possible differential diagnosis for this image if you don't have proper clinical history? Uh, smoking related, uh, like. Uh, okay, this is called the Yes. Uh, this. Uh, of course, yes, miliar yes, TB, so metastasis, metastasis, metastasis from thyroid, yes. So we need a proper clinical history of prolonged okay. exposure to pro uh, proteinaceous mm. uh, antigens. Yes. Uh, in the subacute subtype, uh, subacute uh, subtype, uh, this is present uh, later. Uh, in the acute, it's present within six hours from the exposure, but the subacute within uh, four weeks till two or three months uh, from the exposure to intermittent low dose of the antigen. Uh, the histop histology uh, correspond well with the uh, CT findings. Uh, the alveolitis uh, manifests as diffuse or patchy ground glass. Uh, the peribronchial granuloma manifests as a centrilobular ground uh, glass nodule. Uh, and the silver bronchiolitis uh, cause the mosaic perfusion with air trapping, as we see here. Uh, and this sign of the uh, head cheese sign is uh, uh, characteristic for the subacute uh, type. Uh, with uh, this is combination of uh, mosaic perfusion, air trapping, and uh, normal lung with uh, ground glass appearance. Uh, this disease affect mainly the uh, this is diffuse or predominantly in the mid lung zones and involve the entire cross-section of the lung, like this. The, all the, the cross-section will be affected, mm -hmm. not the uh, peripheral or central. And surprisingly, it's more in the lower lobes here. Yes, uh, this one is expiratory uh, film, yeah. uh, because mm -hmm. of the air trapping and mosaic, it's more seen in the expiratory. It uh, the looks like crazy paving pattern. Huh? Okay. <laughs> The manual CT findings will diffuse uh, all the similar, yani, <laughs> little yeah. difference. Diffuse. Mm -hmm. uh, the chronic or fibrotic type, uh, this one predominantly pulmonary fibrosis. Uh, 
And uh, this, uh, the, uh, the findings of the subacute, that as we say, the central lobular nodule will ground glass will mosaic, we can see it here with the, fibro with the fibrosis. Uh, but this, unlike the uh, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, the honeycombing is uh, less common. Less we see the honeycombing, and this is involved the upper uh, lobes, but the, in the idiopathic, it's uh, mainly involved the lower. <coughs> and here there is a relative sparing of the bases. So if we see the uh, fibrosis in the upper, uh, upper lobes, uh, lobes we will uh, suggest the chronic uh, hypersensitivity more than uh, idiopathic. Here we see tractional bronchiectasis and uh, less uh, honeycombing uh, with reticulation, intralobular and uh, interlobular uh, thickening. Uh, the pneumoconiosis, this is uh, also diffuse lung interstitial lung disease that caused by, uh, causes the micronodular interstitial pattern. Uh, we have two uh, common types, silicosis and uh, coal worker pneumoconiosis. Uh, these, although they are histologically and, uh, different and uh, caused by different inhaled dust, but the uh, imaging is very uh, similar. Uh, this is, uh, we see centrilobular uh, and uh, subpleural nodules scattered uh, mainly on the upper uh, lobes. Uh, this one is uh, uncomplicated silicosis. Simple silicosis or uncomplicated silicosis. Uh, it also looks like sarcoidosis, uh, very similar in this one, because it's <coughs> upper and centrilobular. Uh, the silicosis also cause uh, egg uh, shell uh, lymph node calcification. Here the, uh, we have uh, hyalur and mediastinal enlarged lymph node with egg shell uh, lymph node calcification. This is more common seen in silicosis rather than uh, cow workers in pneumoconiosis. Uh, both uh, silicosis and cow workers pneumoconiosis may cause uh, progressive massive fibrosis or large masses, conglomerate masses. This is when the small nodules come uh, coalesce together and form a large mass more than 3 cm, mainly in the upper host, the upper lung zones. Uh, and these masses sometimes uh, cavitate, and uh, as this one show cavity inside, air fluid inside, uh, this one uh, we, we should consider TB because the, uh, both the cowl workers and silicosis increase the risk of TB and uh, cancer. There is a, a, a very good uh, correlation between silicosis and TB. They call yes. it silico-TB. Yes. Yes. A lot of times you see silico-TB. Okay. And this uh, CT scan and chest X-ray of a patient with rheumatoid arthritis uh, with uh, <coughs> background of uh, <coughs> local pneumoconiosis uh, shows the, uh, this uh, rheumat uh, neurobiotic uh, rheumatoid nodules, necrobiotic, necro so, uh, necrobiotic uh, rheumatoid nodules. Uh, this is superimposed on small centrilobular uh, nodules of the cow worker pneumoconiosis. Uh, also, this one sometimes cavitate this nodules, may so cavitate. Without history, no one ever will have of course. This diagnosis of the Another one is as, uh, asbestosis. Uh, this is caused by inhalation of asbestos fibers. Uh, this is predominantly affect the lower lobes. Uh, this uh, the first started with a small pleural effusions, uh, but the effusion is not specific finding. Uh, then it will cause a pleural thickening and plaques. When the plaques calcify, this is very characteristic for asbestosis. We, ha she we have sheets. Uh, High pleural calcifications with X-ray plaque. Holy leaf sign. Yes, yes, holy okay. leaf sign. Mm. Holy leaf sign. Yes. Why is asbestosis in lower and the in upper lower? Uh, it's heavy, fiber, uh, heavy anti yeah, antigen. Yes, heavy. Yes. 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 You yes. ask, what did you work before? Yeah, because the, but, uh, the disease is... It's a long is, time for yes, this to happen. At least 20 years, the, this so finding. And increased risk of uh, cancer, uh, cancer, mesothelioma of the pleura. Yes. Uh, here, this one is fibrosis. There is also honeycombing and uh, articulation. And this one is the plaques. It's peripheral uh, and uh, basal. There, there is a minimum effusion maybe with it. 
Another entity is eosinophilic lung disease. Uh, this is caused by accumulation of eosinophils in the pulmonary air space and interstitium. We have two types, uh, simple uh, pulmonary eosinophil and chronic. The simple also called Loeffler's syndrome. Uh, this mainly affects the upper lung zones with peripheral distribution, spares the cost of freeing ankles. Uh, these are transient and migratory areas of local consolidation which may be associated with halocyne. This is area of consolidation with area of ground glass uh, peripherally, a halocyne. Uh, elevated eosinophil count in the peripheral smear uh, usually we see. Uh, in the chronic, uh, this may be idiopathic or associated with no antigen. Uh, here we have a chronic consolidation that doesn't re uh, resolve and not respond to antibiotic. When uh, continuous months or years from this uh, consolidation will appear on the CT and the findings clini clinically is not correlated with the findings of the CT. Also, there is peripheral eosinophilia and history of the asthma in half of the cases, not all. Uh, peripheral consolidation and uh, subplural. Uh, this is identical to cryptogenic organizing pneumonia in the appearance and in the symptom of the patient. Uh, also, this upper low predominance and the condition can remain unchanged for the month uh, and this is rapidly respond to uh, uh, steroid but not to antibiotic. Here we have this uh, patchy area of consolidation and in the X-ray uh, gives the appearance of reverse bad wing uh, sign. Another entity is pulmonary vasculitis. Uh, we have the uh, Charg Strauss uh, uh, va vasculitis, all allergic angitis and granulomatosis. Uh, this one is systemic small vessel vasculitis associated with asthma, and all the cases associated with asthma and peripheral eosinophilia. Uh, the P anca is positive, but uh, this is not specific. Uh, on the imaging, there is uh, peripheral consolidation or ground glass that works and one. Uh, and the, there is centrilobular nodule. What's and wait? When? Yani, uh, yani, aku, ma. Did you A small plural effusion may be seen in 50% of the cases. Here we see there is patch area of consolidation peripherally. In the microscopic polyangitis, uh, this is most common cause of pulmonary hemorrhage in uh, cases with renal failure. Also, the P anca is positive. In the imaging, we see diffuse cent uh, central predominant ground glass. This one, there is here ground glass. This uh, representing the hemorrhage. We see this haziness here. And uh, this is, looks like pulmonary edema, but without cardiomegaly and pleural effusion. Uh, the Wigner's granulomatosis, uh, this disease is systemic small uh, vessel vasculitis. Uh, the classical uh, triad is uh, sinusitis, lung involvement, and renal insufficiency. Uh, the P, uh, the C anca is positive, and uh, this is very specific for Wigner's. Uh, the differential is uh, septic emboli. Uh, well, uh, ma this is multiple cavitary uh, nodules that doesn't respond to antibiotic. Uh, an intracavity fluid level may be seen. This is multiple cavity with uh, variable size, and there is fluid level inside. And in the septic emboli, they are smaller and uniform. Uh, and in both, we can see feeding vessel. Septic emboli, you don't have sinusitis. Of course, yes. With this nurse, guys and in patient and the sinusitis. Sin sinusitis, no, 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 sinusitis, yeah. 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 Oh, uh, also, there is uh, this involvement of the trachea cause stenosis. No yes, sometimes involve the, uh, the bronchi and cause uh, lobar collapse or a segmental collapse. L iatrogenic <coughs> lung diseases, this is caused by drug toxicity or by radiation. Uh, the, the lung has many ways to respond to the injury. Uh, this is, uh, may be caused by the normal dose of the drug or over the overdose of the drug. Uh, the, uh, the pattern of the response of the, uh, of the lung to this injury of the drug may be uh, causing the pulmonary edema and maybe mosaic uh, pattern or organizing pneumonia, may cause fibrotic change, effusion, and alveolar hemorrhage uh, or isolated ground glass opacities. Uh, there are so many types of the drug that cause the uh, lung, uh, diffuse lung disease. And, and this is uh, put in the differential of so many diseases of the, the diffuse lung disease. Uh, the radiation lung uh, injury, uh, about 40% of the patient uh, develop radi uh, radiographic abnormality after the external radiotherapy. We have uh, early stage of radiation injury and later stage. 
chronic. Uh, in the early stage, uh, this is occur after one month from the history of radiation and most severe in three to four months after the treatment. Uh, radiation pneumonitis uh, give feature of ground glass uh, centered in the radiation port, although the extension may be seen in about 20% of the cases. Here there is extensive ground glass uh, of the upper uh, left uh, lung the lobes. Is it does not follow anatomy. Yes. Non-anatomical pathology. Why? Because it's mm. not natural, it's our yeah, induced. Yes. Yes. Our induced. Yes. Here we see this X-ray early uh, radiation pneumonitis. This is the pre-treatment. We have nodule in the left upper lobe. And after the treatment, give this increase in the reticulation and some uh, haziness in the upper uh, lung, left upper lung zone. Okay. This is after three months. The severity of the acute is uh, three to four months. We can see it. Uh, radiation fibrosis, this is later stage of radiation injury, uh, about six to 12 months after the therapy. Uh, the key imaging finding is the distribution of the fibrosis and traction bronchiectasis within the radiation port. Here the radiation uh, field, we see, uh, causing this fibrosis and decrease in the lung volume. This is after eight months. Here also we see a decrease in the lung volume and... Uh, it's very, very square. Mm -hmm. Because just higher radiation. Okay? It does not follow any anatomy. Uh, another disease that causes the diffuse lung disease is idiopathic systemic disease uh, like sarcoidosis. Sarcoidosis is an idiopathic systemic disorder of non causating granulomas that become coalescent to form nodules and masses throughout the body. Uh, the pulmonary fibrosis may progress, uh, the pulmonary sarcoidosis may progress to fibrosis and honeycombing, uh, but it's unlike the uh, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, uh, the change may be um, in the mid and upper lung predominance. We have stage of the uh, sarcoidosis. Uh, in the uh, stage zero, there is normal chest uh, radiograph. Uh, in the stage one, we see bilateral hilar lymph adenopathy. Uh, in the stage two, there is uh, hilar enlargement and parenchymal disease. Uh, in the stage three, the, the hilar uh, will not see it, just the parenchymal. And in the end stage, stage four, there is a fibrotic change, pulmonary fibrosis. Uh, we have this sign, uh, one, two, three sign, and donor sign of sarcoidosis. And the one, two, th uh, one, two three sign is there is enlargement of the both hyla and paratracheal, uh, right paratracheal stripe. And uh, sometimes uh, now they say there is four also, four, which is uh, enlargement, or con uh, there is uh, concavity of the aortopulmonary window. Uh, and the donor sign, we see uh, this uh, opacity around the trachea. This is from the enlarged lymph nodes. Keep in mind. Bilateral, symmetric, symmetric high yes. lymphadenopathy yes. is sarcoidosis. Yes. It's uh, sarcoidosis, very resemble to the lymph, uh, lymphoma, but the lymphoma is asymmetrical yes. enlargement. Yes. Uh, also, the sarcoidosis causes the uh, actual uh, calcification of the lymph node. It's seen about 50% of the cases. We see here we what have. What else causes actual calcification? Silicosis. Uh, in the city findings, uh, <coughs> the upper lobe predominant, uh, and uh, also th uh, this, there is uh, the uh, nodules with its perilymphatic uh, nodules uh, along the course of the pulmonary lymphatics, which are uh, peribronchovascular, subpleural, or within the interlobal septa. Here we see the subpleural and pro uh, bronchovascular, and within the septa. Uh, Sometimes these nodules are coalesced together and form a large uh, um, nodule and uh, give this appearance of galaxy sign the large nodule and some small nodule, satellite nodule around, around the large nodule. This is the galaxy sign of sarcoidosis. In the stage four of sarcoidosis, fibrotic change, we see here bronchiectasis, uh, traction bronchiectasis, and some cystic change with uh, interlobar, interlobar thickening, and articulation. Uh, the sarcoidosis also affect the other organs like spleen, brain, and but rarely the bone. Uh, other uh, cause of diffuse lung disease that cause cystic change, uh, pulmonary lung and hostile histocytosis. Uh, this is uh, smoking-related lung diseases. Uh, we see it in 100% uh, in adult, uh, male, mainly male, uh, with history of smoking. This is female, but before the male. It may present as a spontaneous pneumothorax because this uh, cyst may uh, increase in size and rupture and cause uh, pneumothorax. Uh, disease is most uh, often isolated to the lung, uh, but uh, however, we can see it in the bone and uh, di cause diabetes and sepitas also from the pituitary involvement and or skin involvement. 
Uh, the characteristic of this disease is that it uh, starts with nodules, uh, small nodules, and these nodules will cavitate and uh, cause uh, cyst, and this cyst will become enlarged and cause bizarre shaped or irregular cyst. Uh, this is characteristic uh, of for the uh, Langerhastian stocytosis. Uh, so it's caused uh, mixed pattern, uh, nodular and cystic change. Uh, the upper lobe predominant and uh, this uh, irregular peribron peribronchovascular nodule, uh, both sparing the cost of phrenic sulci. Uh, this is generally a uh, steroid response and smoking cessation is critical. So we see there is cyst, cyst and uh, uh, variable in size and there are some uh, large and irregular. Uh, the other uh, disease, miscellaneous uh, diffuse uh, pulmonary disease like uh, pulmonary alveolar proteinosis, uh, the characteristic for this disease is the uh, mosaic appearance. Uh, give the uh, geographic mosaic appearance, uh, f uh, like uh, the perihilar opacification. Uh, however, uh, the heart here we see uh, it's normal in size and no effusion. Uh, first, uh, this idiopathic disease, of course, and uh, caused by uh, surfactant or lipid-rich material inside it. Uh, so, uh, the hallmark of uh, crazy paving pattern, uh, before the crazy paving pattern was first described in this disease, but uh, this is not specific for it. Uh, give the appearance of smooth uh, interlobular septal thickening and area of uh, ground glass. This ground glass with interlobal thickening, this gives this crazy paving appearance. Uh, sometimes there is superimposed infection, like in this case, there is no cardiac infection, give this consolidation. Uh, another entity is LAM, uh, lymphangiolyomyomatosis. Uh, this is uh, gives diffuse cystic lung disease uh, caused by uh, bronchial obstruction and lung destruction due to proliferation of immature smooth muscle cells in the uh, small vessels, lymphatics, and bronchioles. Uh, almost all the cases are uh, seen in women in childbearing age. Uh, sometimes, <laughs> yes. Sometimes the uh, the case will present uh, after uh, I mean perimenopause, but because uh, she had the history of the disease before, uh, but we can see it in the later stage. Uh, about one percent of the this disease we can see it uh, in the tuberous sclerosis. Uh, when this is tried of seizure, mental retardation, and uh, adenoma sebaceum and bilateral uh, angiomyelopoma in the renal. And so, uh, and when the case is associated with tuberous sclerosis, we, uh, maybe the case is male, yani, we see it here. So it's very little, uh, very rare to be seen in male. Uh, some cases respond to uh, anti-estrogen therapy. Uh, this is also associated with pneumothorax and uh, chylus pleural effusion. The case may present first with pneumothorax or hydro-pneumothorax from the chylus pleural effusion. Uh, in the CT finding, there is numerous uh, thin-walled uh, lung cysts, round and regular, and this is diffuse in distribution. Uh, unlike the lung hands, when it's predominant in the upper, this is diffuse, all the lung will be affected, and the cysts are round and regular and uh, much smaller size than the lung hand, which, uh, and the characteristic of the lung hand is the bizarre shaped cyst, large cyst. Also, there is this one, pneumothorax. In the X-ray, uh, we can see a hyperinflated lungs, uh, increase in the uh, size of the uh, lung field, and there is reticulation, and some, I think this one, pneumothorax here, uh, this one, uh, when we see it in the uh, chest X-ray, and we see the breast shadow, in this case, is female. A few top uh, points about the mediastinum. Uh, the mediastinum, uh, the anatomy is di they divi divided in, in two, three compartments, uh, anterior, middle, and posterior. Uh, just two minutes. Okay. okay. Uh, the uh, anatomy of the mediastinum divided in two, three compartments, anterior, the prevascular, the middle, the uh, pericardium space, and the uh, posterior to it, the posterior compartment. Uh, and the anterior, uh, this one ex uh, includes the thymus, the thyroid lymph node, uh, and uh, the middle, the pericardium, and the large vessels, and the, uh, with the trachea and posterior compartment, the esophagus, and the paraspinal, if there is mass paraspinal included in the, through in the posterior, and some nerves. Uh, the lines that are important in the mediastinum, this uh, is very important to, uh, we, uh, we see it uh, if there is deviation or loss of the, this, uh, 
the, this characteristic, this may be uh, caused by a mass or uh, another pathology. Uh, we have the two important one is the uh, anterior junctional line and posterior junctional line. Uh, the anterior, when the two lungs come in contact anterior to the uh, heart, and this uh, ends in the uh, ends in the uh, right uh, right ventricular outflow tract. It is below the clavicle, uh, but the posterior one is above clavicle and uh, from the T1 and downward, but um, we, we see it above the clavicle. If there is a deviation of the posterior uh, junctional line, the, the mass should be in the posterior uh, part of the lung. And the right uh, paratracheal stripe, when the right uh, lung upper part come in contact with the trachea, this is, we see right upper, it should not be more than uh, three millimeters. And uh, another one is the uh, azygoesophageal uh, recess when the uh, azygos and esophagus come in contact with the uh, lung. And the aortopulmonary window, uh, this window is between the uh, aorta and the aorta uh, superiorly and the pulmonary, uh, left pulmonary uh, inferiorly. This should be convex, uh, convex uh, on the, uh, the, con the contour should be shallow, uh, shallow concave, concave. Uh, context, there should be a mass. The mass may be from the lymph node or from the nerves or uh, aneurysm, like this one here, this is the concave. If it becomes convex, it uh, should uh, raise suspicion of a mass in this place. Uh, there is two spaces, a retrosternal clear space and retrocardiac. Uh, they are lucent and very similar. And uh, this retrosternal, if there is obliteration, maybe a mass, or if it increases, maybe emphysema. Uh, there is uh, this variant, normal variant, left superior intercostal vein, when come in contact with the aorta, gives the, uh, this sign is called nipple sign should not be mistaken with a pathology. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Very nice. I like it. Any questions? Anyone? Thank you so much.